Sup, everybody. Welcome to what I'm calling the pre-bag nation. Because it's not G-bag time, that's at 10 a.m. It's the pre-bag nation in Studio Day Heffery at my house. What's up, everybody? I want to do a Cowboys mailbag today. Just talked to my Facebook peeps last night and said, hey, what's on your Cowboy brain? Hit me up. Let me know. And so now I got a bunch of questions here, and we can just kind of talk Cowboys in the pre-bag nation. Number one from Jason on Facebook. If the offense doesn't succeed, does Garrett get the ax? And if so, does Richard take over and totally revamp the offensive staff? I don't know. Wow, what a bad way to start mailbag. I don't know. Um, Because there's parts we don't know. Kellen Moore is the offensive coordinator. How much of the offense is actually Kellen Moore's and how much is still a Jason Garrett influence? I think a lot of teams do a really good job of not telling you exactly who's doing what. Like what we hear is it seems like Kellen Moore is kind of running this thing. And if that's the case, are you going to fail? Are you going to fire Jason Garrett if the offense isn't good enough? Probably because he's just been here long enough. And if you don't have sustained success, then it's just time for that dude to go. Time for the head coach to go. Uh, if it's the offense's fault, I just I don't know if it'll be his fault or if it'll be Kellen Moore's fault. Uh, they're in an interesting spot because if they do really well, I think they'd like to keep Garrett. If they do well and the offense does great and teams come calling after Kellen Moore, do you have to get rid of Garrett and promote Kellen to make him a head coach to keep him? Does the same thing happen with Chris Richard? If the defense is good and if the league catches up and really is interested in Chris Richard, I don't know. Um I can't see Garrett getting fired if they have a good year unless they feel like they have to do that to save one of their other coaches in terms of people coming after him. Next question from Michael on the Facebook. By the way, I'm trying to work on my posture today, but I always forget to. You know, I want to sit here and look like a respectable dude. Like, hey, everybody, but whatever. Who would you like to be the Cowboys head coach? Leave that in the comments. Garrett, Richard, Kellen Moore. Do I have to throw in the wild card, Sean Payton? We probably need to. Who do you want to be the Cowboys head coach? Maybe you want a cartoon character. Throw in your favorite cartoon character. Put that in the comments for me. Entertain me today. Michael on Facebook, he said, I want to talk about defense. Is Malik Collins going to play so good he makes us really think about re-signing him, or does Tristan Hill show us we'll be fine without Malik? And him and Woods are the future inside. It's a huge year for Malik Collins. I think part of why the Tristan Hill pick happened there in the second round, part of why they targeted him so uh, so much, they were so zoned in on, we're going to get Tristan Hill. Because they knew the names that were going to go in the first round or before them uh, at defensive tackle. Tristan Hill was the guy that I knew would make it to them, but they thought would make it to them. And they kind of viewed him... Remember the Demarcus Lawrence here when they saw Demarcus Lawrence and Will McClay's banging on the table? He's like, that's the quarterback, Hunter. It's the last one. Sorry, I banged on the table. It shakes the camera. I think they felt the same way about Tristan Hill. We're sorry you can't have Quinn and Williams, can't have Ed Oliver because you don't have a pick for it, but they viewed it as the last one was Tristan Hill. And that's not as important if you already have a good three technique. It's not a massive priority if you already have a guy. But I think Malik Collins health-wise has got them to the point where they just don't trust him. Uh, And, you know, that's not your own fault. It's your body. But at the same time, I think they got to a point where they're bringing in the guy to get ready to move on from Malik Collins. Now, you can always change that. You could go out there, you could be healthy, you could have an incredible year, and you could change that. But I think the Tristan Hill pick was all about it's tough to trust Malik Collins because when you get a big guy like that and you got a bunch of lower body injuries, it's tough to shake those off. Michael also wants to know, is Taco about to overcome or be overcome by Dorrance Armstrong? Maybe it's his last days in Dallas. Dorrance Armstrong was okay last year. I think he was better than a lot of people expected. KT and I kind of saw it coming because we do the draft work and thought that that getting Dorrance Armstrong where he was picked was a really good value because he had really solid tape at Kansas on a really bad team. Yeah, talk, for Taco, the meritocracy is real life right now. You're Anybody that you want to play in front of, you have to play better than them in practice. That's not true as a rookie. It's probably not true as a second-year player when you're a first-round pick because they're like, they invested in you. You get to play. Congrats. That's gone. Now, if Dorrance Armstrong is better than Taco Charlton, Dorrance Armstrong plays. And Tank is going to play. Robert Quinn is going to play. There's your starters. If Randy Gregory's eligible, he's going to play. So, you may be fighting for being the fourth defensive end. 
if Gregory's allowed to play. Or if Tyrone Crawford's playing a bunch of defensive end snaps, you're still fighting for the fourth defensive end. So this is huge. It's a huge year for Taco. It's a big year for Dorrance, too. If you want to if you want to get a significant amount of snaps, you're going to have to be one of the best players on the field in practice just because, you know, the top two spots are taken. The third one is maybe taken, depending on how that suspension looks. Freddie, will we all be overly hyped for the season to once again – be disappointed at the end result also is life meaningless. No, man. Life's really cool. It's not always the best, but it's really cool. That's a dark question. Uh, but yes, we're going to be overhyped. Everybody's going to overhype their team before the season. And 31 of the 32 are going to be disappointed at the end result. If they lose in the Super Bowl, we're going to be disappointed. So, yes, I'm prepared to be disappointed. I don't think it's a better than 50-50 chance they win the Super Bowl. Ismail, will we see my boy Xavier Woods take a big step in his game this year? You know this, man. You know our guy's going off this year. He was good last year. You saw it as a rookie. You need to get better at tackling. He got better at tackling. Now I want him to get an extra couple of interceptions. He's going to get a couple of extra interceptions. Xavier Woods is a baller. Just get ready to enjoy it. Gary, I don't understand not adding an experienced quality backup behind Dak. The season's shot if Dak misses any extended time. Tom Moore had my favorite quote on this matter. You've probably heard me say it before. They asked him about that with Peyton Manning. He said, 18 goes down, we're effed. We don't practice effed. They've tried it. They try, I mean, they, when you had Matt Castle, Brandon Whedon, they tried. Those were guys that have had NFL success. So, like, the Eagles, they pulled it off. Nick Foles was good. When Carson Wentz went down multiple times, kind of up and down, but he was good when they needed him. Cowboys tried. They said, okay, we're going to invest. We're going to make sure we've got something back there in case something goes wrong. And it turns out those guys were trash. They couldn't play. So I, I just, I think it's tough because you got to decide one, how much money do I want to invest into a spot that if they have to play, I could be screwed anyway. It might mean nothing because we've done it. We've brought in the old heads who are supposed to be, you know, steady if somebody got hurt, and they were awful. Now, maybe with a new offensive coordinator, maybe having somebody behind deck with some NFL experience could be a good idea, but they tried it before, and I think that hurt. And so now you kind of look at your salary cap and say, hey, what about adding things that will help us win the Super Bowl, not survive if we lose our quarterback? Uh, Let me see here. Brett on Facebook. What the team needs to focus on as far as improvements on both sides of the ball and how that determines the money that we spend or do not spend, where we feel secure, and where we need to make changes or additions. Well, you're secure at offensive line. Holy cow, you're secure at offensive line. You got three pro bowlers, maybe three all pros. I think Connor Williams will be better. You drafted Connor McGovern, Lyle Collins, even when he walks. You've got uh, a swing tackle right now in Cam. You've got Joe Looney as a backup. So offensive line, you don't need to improve. Secondary is one of the ones that's up in the air. How does Cheeto play this year? What happens when Anthony Brown's contract is up? Uh, what's going to happen with Byron Jones? They, they threw some picks at it this year, and they threw some free agency money at it this year. But – you could be in a spot where you're trying to replace a lot more than everybody's thinking you're trying to replace in a real hurry. You'll have Xavier Woods for another year after this. You'll have Cheeto for another year after this. But yeah, if they're not, if Jordan Lewis isn't a, isn't going to be allowed to play football because he's not tall enough for this coaching staff, uh, they the secondary they're going to need to focus on. Linebacker core, you're super safe. Running back's fine for now. Let's see what Tony Pollard and if Mike Weber makes the team. Let's see what those guys are, but running back's fine for now, and you can replace that whenever you need to. You know why? Because running back doesn't matter that much. Quarterbacks, oh, that's controversial. Quarterbacks, fine. They're going to pay him. It's fine because you're in a Super Bowl window. You don't go flipping your quarterback around when you're trying to win the Super Bowl. Juan, which rookie will have the biggest impact this season? Your dream is Tristan Hill. The dream is that that's the guy that has the biggest season. He was your highest pick. Uh, he plays a position where he should get a lot of opportunities. You want him to pressure the quarterback. You want it to be him. 
It could be Connor McGovern if they let him compete for a starting job. I don't think they're really going to let him compete. I think that's developmental for the first year. And Tony Pollard is the other hope. Uh, if Tony Pollard could do something for you and they actually have carved out a role for him and, and he makes that sort of impact, it's Tony Pollard. So I think your reasonable answers are Tony Pollard and Tristan Hill. Jeff said, talk about the prices for a burger. Got to make burgers at the house. People are going to charge you for those burgers. You got to make burgers at the house. He said, it's hard to sneak nachos and cheese into the stadium. It's hard and it's hot. Yeah, I could see that, man. I could see that. And it's going to stay there a while. You got to be there for the whole game. What's, what is your plan? How are you planning to contain the cheese in your pocket? I don't understand. Brian on Facebook, is Duke Johnson a better option than our drafted rookies this year? Is he worth the draft pick compensation it's going to take to get him? The second part of that question is the part that matters because, yes, he's better than your drafted rookies. Duke Johnson's awesome. He's one of the better receiving backs in football, period. And Cleveland, for whatever reason, doesn't like to hand him the ball. Watch him play at Miami. You can hand him the ball, too. I love Duke. Uh, If the Cowboys let me run the team for a day, we're going to call him and say, hey, what about a fifth-round pick? And they're going to say, why would we do that? When his contract runs out, we'll get a better comp pick than that for Duke Johnson. So, no. Uh, I think they're holding out for at least a three, and that's not going to happen because he's not happy. They aren't happy. Like Nobody's happy in that spot. So, you're not going to get the kind of compensation they want. So, I don't know what happens there. But if he becomes available, I want him. Adrian, let's talk about our silly running back. Hashtag Tolo. Oh, come on, man. Silly's not the right word, but I saw Jane Slater's update that they're not expecting suspension, so that's awesome news uh, to not expect a suspension for Ezekiel Elliott. You're going to move on from Ezekiel Elliott in your own time for your own reasons, not because he's suspended. All right, that's the pre-bag nation, everybody. Check out 1053thefan.com, of course. Every day it is your sports hub for everything that you need. I'm sorry I did not get my posture right today. I failed again, and I was touching the desk and wobbling the camera too much. Uh, in addition to, I have a tendency to just kind of sway back and forth. Solo broadcasting is hard, but thanks for stopping by. Check the YouTube page, hit the subscribe button, check at JC1053, hit the follow button, and enjoy your whatever day of the week this is, of course. And we'll catch you at 10 a.m. on the G-Bag Nation and 1053thefan.com.